Hello everyone. My name is Tom Blow. I'm the creator of the Free Flight Experience Virtual Reality Hang Gliding Simulator. It's been a while since I've done a video like this, but we reached a big milestone today um, with the release of the open beta version of the software to everybody who is interested in uh, experiencing what it's like to fly a hang glider. So to help you guys uh, figure this software out, I thought I would make a short video, just kind of walk you through the initial steps to get you uh, into a glider, into a hang gliding site, and begin to uh, experience what this game is all about. Um, so essentially, uh, we've got an, a mirror here running. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my Oculus Quest on. I'm connected to my, my gaming PC right now using the um, Oculus Link, but it also works with AirLink, and I also uh, alternatively run with the HP Reverb G2 um, and the Rift and the Rift S. So all these headsets will work just fine. Haven't done any testing, uh, at least not successfully, with the HTC Vive. I had some problems getting their controllers to work properly. So um, if you have a Vive and no other headset, I don't recommend you go and make the investment in the software quite yet. All right, so I'm going to put this on, and I am now here in my VR world. And let's see here. Uh, let me make sure that you guys are recording. Okay, that's, that looks like it's recording. I'm going to go ahead and click on my desktop icon to start the game. Game launch detected. I'm also running something that, that, that is called uh, Oculus Desk. And um, so right as the game starts, we're going to check for the license for the file. And um, we're currently at Dillon Beach, which is where I learned to hang glide back in the early, mid-1970s. Um, this dune was closed around mid-1980 to hang gliding, um, but uh, was one of the fa most fantastic sites in Northern California to learn to fly. And uh, I thought I would recreate it here for the purposes of, of uh, my new audience. And it uh, looks like this guy has uh, found a little bit of a thermal with the help of a, of a red-tailed hawk, which is up here, also flying around. So this is just the opening scene. And um, we need to get sites like this uh, reestablished. Um, now, any... Uh, scene in, hang, in this game, for you to get positioning yourself to, I'll call it the origin or the, the, the perfect position to interact with a menu or to fly the glider, you need to press on the right controller this uh, side button. We call it the grip button on the right controller. And you'll see it snapped me right to this menu. There's a disclaimer here, making sure that you understand that this is not a substitute for instruction, and a little talk about this intense experience that you might have. It could give you some, some symptoms of motion sickness, and I want you to be aware of that. If you understand and agree all of this, you go ahead and click on this button here, and you'll be taken to this cut, cut screen. Welcome to the free flight experience. And then you'll show up at a, a, a street side cafe for morning coffee where we decide uh, what we're going to fly today. All right, so here we are. Um, I'm going to first point out up here on top of the screen we have several options. And here you can select whether or not you'd like your Vario to display in metric units or not. What kind of head mounted display? Oculus Quest or Reverb or Pimax? What are you using today? We're going to go with the Quest here terrain mesh detail level. If you have a low performance computer, you might check 2D clouds. It'll give you much better performance. Also, the glory spectrum effect is also somewhat uh, costly in terms of CPU performance. Um, birds are helpful to help you spot thermals. You can turn your Vario volume up and down here. The day-long thermal cycle in certain modes of the game will cause the thermals to start off very weak in the morning, peak in midday, and diminish during the afternoon. There are actually more, uh, more accurate modeling capabilities built into the game, um, even more so than this day-long thermal cycle, which we'll talk about later. 
Um, at some point in the future, we're going to have the ability to re record an IGC file that you can play back using other programs, but that hasn't been implemented yet. Allow pilot body yawing. This is an important option if you're a beginner um, and don't want the pilot's body to be able to twist side to side when you're, uh, when you're flying, caused by you're moving your hands like this, forward and aft, you can check that box off. I have a cat that's trying to climb up on my lap, of course. All right, so allow pilot body yawing. I'm going to go ahead and check that here just because I want to be able to show you what that does. There it goes. Pilot character, pilot A, pilot B, pilot C. Um, you can choose different models of your pilot. If, um, if you're a lady, you can, you can have a pilot that looks more like you do if you wish. Um, cull triangles outside of view. This is a way of cutting down on uh, triangles that the game needs to render and can provide you a little bit better performance. But on some VR systems, it can create artifacts where you see the triangles at the edge of the screen popping in and out. Here you can adjust the brightness of your view and the vario position. Do you want the vario to be on the base tube of the glider in the middle or off of one down, one down tube? After you've selected all of these options, go ahead, return to the main menu. Um, under practice control, we have the option now of showing you a little bit of how your body is going to move in response to your hand movements. So I'm pressing this joystick here on my left, in my, uh, my right hand. And when I do so, see, so press in right joystick to toggle the pause menu and show this menu. So what you want to do is looking directly at your hands in flight position, you press this grip trigger like this. And now you can see I'm in this, this uh, demonstration mode and I can see how moving my hands left and right or forward or back moves the control bar in this virtual hanging hang gliding simulator. So if I move myself to the side, you can see the wing will tip, but it's also important that I, if I push with my left hand and pull with my right hand, I can move my body even further, which is how we, as pilots, effectively weight shift our gliders. So these are the correct body movements for maximum control input. And if you simply just twist your hands left or right, as you can see, it doesn't actually cause a control input. When you're done with this menu, Click on main menu and you'll come back to the start screen. Now, if you wish to use uh, an input method besides sitting at your desk using your VR controllers, that is you have a control frame and a harness that you'd like to set up, you can use either joystick or VR plus harness to use those techniques. And we'll talk about that more in the manual. Of course, exit game will exit the game. Um, Next is a list of all the hang gliding sites that you can fly today. And the only ones that are implemented here are the ones that are in color. We are going to be implementing a custom input where you can put the latitude and longitude of your launch and landing zone, um, the direction that you launch at, and it will take you there uh, anywhere in the world. But for now, let's just go ahead and show you just one of the short little flights. Um, we're going to take off to, let me think, where should we go today? Um, well, folks probably haven't really seen Slide, uh, Slide Mountain. We'll do Slide Mountain. Slide Mountain is in Nevada. It's a flying site that uh, those of us here in California like to fly. And it's a, a serious, a high desert thermal site. So we launch over a guardrail, and you'll see here in a moment. This is uh, where we are at launch. All right, so I'm looking at this scene right now and I'm noticing that it's a little bit washed out. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, hit the, the minus key on my keyboard. And that's darkening the scene up a little bit, making it a little bit better contrast. I can see there's one pilot up above launch just starting to head out. Now, notice here in front of me, it says, am I hooked in? Yes, am I, are my leg straps uh, secure? Is my helmet buckled? Parachute safety pins checked. And that number launching in is a countdown. Um, and right now, 
if I click this left joystick button in, I'll launch. Um, if uh, Otherwise, it counts down to zero and you launch automatically. The Vario shows that I am at 8,106 feet above sea level. The air temperature is 42 degrees. I have about a four mile an hour wind blowing up the slope here, and the time is 1,301, uh, so thir one o'clock uh, and one minute. So over here on my left is the main uh, entry menu. I can exit the simulation. I can go back to the main menu where I can pick different places to fly. I can relaunch coming back to this spot, even if I'm once I'm in the air. I can go into a site tour mode, which I'll start off with. Clicking site tour takes me outside of the glider, and using this red arrow, I can fly myself in any direction and familiarize myself with this particular hangar. pull the joystick back to fly backwards. So this is the hang gliding site at Slide Mountain, Nevada, which is very close to beautiful Lake Tahoe, which as you can see is just behind one. We've got a, a nice high cloud base today. Let's talk a little bit about the weather. So I'll zoom us back down here. Um, there is one other feature here in this site tour mode. Notice that you can see my altitude is, is reading out there. Um, and that is I have a, a pair of binoculars. And if I wish to take a look at, a, for example, that glider that's out there uh, in front of launch, you can see I can do that by looking through this set of binoculars. It comes in handy. All right, let me go and return to the glider. And next I'm gonna to go to adjust environment. And this panel allows me um, to load a weather sounding from any given date off of a server on the internet. So right now, the date this weather represents is October 18th of 2021. It happened to be a pretty decent day. If I go ahead and click on load atmospheric sounding, what will happen here is I will see the sounding for that day showing the lapse rate and the dew point spread. And over here is the actual raw data that's being used. But the site right now, things like the clouds and the wind are actually being controlled simply by these sliders. So for example, if I change the cloud base height like this, you can see I can adjust the cloud base height the amount of cloud coverage for the day, or the depth or thickness of the clouds. But if I want to allow those things to be naturally generated algorithmically based on this sounding, I can simply check the box, use clouds from sounding. Or similarly, the wind speed here, you can see I have um, five knots, and uh, the direction is 090 out of the east. If I change the direction of the wind, let me pull myself back here so we can see the flag. If I change the direction of the wind, you can see that I can adjust which way the wind is blowing. And similarly, I can adjust the strength of the wind. Now these flags are actually showing the passage of thermals. I can see that there's a couple of red-tailed hawks out there circling, indicating that there happens to be a thermal on the way up. I can actually show the thermals by pressing the right joystick button here on the side. And sure enough, there is the thermal, the red circle. And you can see there's a couple of red-tailed hawks circling in it. And by God, there's thermals everywhere. So clearly going to be a good day. All right. Turning the thermals off, I'll press the, the, the opposite button, the, the farther forward button on the right controller, and the thermals disappear. OK, so using clouds from sounding, we'll set the cloud base and the cloud depth based on this information. And using winds from sounding will cause the actual wind strength and direction at all the different altitudes to be loaded into the simulator. So if I click that, 
now you can see the, the flags have moved a little bit and that's what the winds look like on this particular day. There they are. So blowing a little bit cross, a little bit down. All right. So I'm going to uncheck that. There we go. I'm going to re return to the glider now. Oh, uh, I also have the option by clicking the left joystick button in to launch a glider, kind of like a wing dummy. And he's going to just take off, and AI is going to fly him, and hopefully he'll find a thermal, and I'll be able to go join him. Let me go ahead and put my hands right where I see uh, my hands in the simulator, and click the button, and off I go. This is more comfortable for a lot of people in VR because it gives you something to focus on to make you less prone to motion sickness. Head over there. 
one hand forward and one hand back. Yaws your body left and right. Pulling in, pushing out. Going back to the pilot's position, hitting the right joystick freezes the glider, presents this menu, allows me to make different adjustments such as going back and relaunching, starting the simulation over, going back to the main menu, or ultimately exiting the simulation like that. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was helpful in uh, introducing you to how the game works. Um, please go ahead and visit uh, the website, www.freeflightexperience.com, and um, get your copy of the game. Thanks a lot.